recording of, the, of me from the slam that it's like, oh my gosh, it's embarrassing to meet you. <laughs> Hi. There's some papers in the back. Okay. Okay, great. A couple of things back there. I didn't produce much paper because it's all on the wiki, so it's easy to download if you want. Mm -hmm. I think 
And the other slam would be the judge should, the judgment is based on the quality of the poem and the quality of the performance. Usually it's a three minute rule so that you don't have somebody going on forever and ever. And we have never imposed that. Normally our poems are not that long. This year we had one student who said, my poem is three minutes and 23 seconds. And I said, <laughs> uh, part of the enjoyment of going to a slam is the audience participation. And the audience gets to cheer and boo and hiss and stomp and snap and clap and all that stuff. Um, and that's cool in a public setting. Uh, that's what quite makes the show. But in, in a school setting, we do it a little different. Uh, first of all, the poems have to go through, through a screen. So we make the students turn their poems into a teacher, their English teacher, or to me. And we look through it for language. And this is the first year I actually had several teachers call me and ask, is this okay for them to say? Is that okay? Some of them changed a few words. Uh, one of them slipped by, and it was like, when, when this, <laughs> do you remember um, Angela Pintor's poem? <laughs> it was like, everybody's eyes got big. <laughs> it was like, oh, but then she made it to the finals, and we'd heard the word every day, but we didn't worry about it. But we do try to, you know, screen out language, and have them change things that are inappropriate for a public school setting. And then we also have to think of putting our kids on the stage in front of people. We don't want them being booed at and hissed at, and so we only allow positive responses. Clapping, snapping, cheering, and we have a lot of that. So we want to make sure our kids feel comfortable getting up there, because it's scary for them. It's scary for me, too. <laughs> so we have that tempered audience response. And I try to prepare, prepare the performers. Uh, like I said, I didn't take the time as much this time as I wished I had ahead of time. But at the slam, when I talked to them face to face, when they turned in their poems, I reminded them that performance was a huge part. Memorize your poem or know it really well so you get your face out of your paper. Inner, you know, when, when you're expressing an emotion on paper, make sure that shows on your face and your voice. And we had, we had some that were pretty good, but we had a lot of people reading this year, which was a little disappointing, but still it was very successful. It was a lot of fun. So here's one of our performers. Ernestine actually was one of, uh, was our sacrificial poet. She had a poem she had me read for her last year, and she wanted to perform it herself this year, so we let her do that one for the judges. And then she had two other poems she performed. We had several students that turned in three, four, five, six poems, so I had to say, you know, pick your two best, and we're going to just limit to two, because it takes too long. You think 38 poems doesn't sound like much, but it went on for almost two hours. So Ernestine performed well. We have this wonderful sign that I had a student a few years ago. Her father worked for a banner company and a printing company. And so she came in one day and said, look what I had my dad made for you. And then I hang my Christmas lights around it, and we get a music stand, and I cover it with a tablecloth. It's like <laughs> pretty basic stuff, but it works. <clears throat> so at Anaheim High School, the poets, like I said, have to turn in their poems ahead of time. They have an entry form, and it's on the wiki at, um, to ask for the theme and the time and the title, and, and their teacher has to sign it for their approval. And uh, then... It, we have judges that are staff members. Four staff members, my library clerical assistant, and three teachers, and then our, li our library book club president, who is Kylie Drake right here, is also a judge. And they uh, get a little training ahead of time, about like five minutes ahead of time, about how to fill out the rubric and what to do with it. And there's a lot of rubrics, because we have 38 poems, you have five judges, that's 90, 190 papers right there. And then you have your sacrificial, and then you have your finalist, and you have to go through and do those again. So there's a lot of paper involved, and I hate wasting all that paper, but I don't know who wants to do it. And one day we'll all do it on the mm -hmm. So we have the rubric that I actually gleaned off the internet. There's a lot of poetry slam rubrics out there, and the one that I use, I think I tweaked it and uh, added some stuff, like the poet's name and the poem's name heat number and the final scores and all that stuff. And that's on the wiki for you to look at. I don't toss out these scores. We just take them and total them up. And that's how we get our winner for each heat. So the students perform in those heats. Um, I, I usually play the role of the MC. Victor's a lot of time are MC at our open mics. But um, I didn't want to impose that on anybody because it's kind of really got to move forward. And so I run that part. And then the top score from each heat goes to the final. So here's our judges, here's our library. I have a really neat old library. We were built by WP, WPA Works. I think it was part of the, um, who 
Hoover Center. Hoover? Hoover, I'm not getting it right. So anyway, old library, it's got all these neat old bookshelves and all this dentil work up here, which is cool. And so we rearrange all the tables, we put all our judges here, we take all our tables and make a big circle out of them so that the performance area is staged. And off we go. Daniel performed a couple of poems this year. He uh, was actually one of our winners last year. And in a little while, Victor's going to perform one of Daniel's poems to show you part of their <coughs> presentation that they do in our classrooms. <coughs> By the way, I didn't mention that yet. Now let's, let's do that because this is a good place to do this. To advertise the slam, I do a lot of emailing, a lot of talking to teachers. I uh, put up signs, um, sometimes my students design posters or I design them and they post them for me. Um, I invite teachers, mostly English teachers, to ask my team of students to come to their classes and present what SLAM is about. So we have four students from Book Club that volunteer to do presentations, which is a little bit intimidating. I'm so impressed that you guys would do that because they have to present what a SLAM is, do an example of the poetry in front of their peers, and then pass out um, entry forms. And so I had four students that did that. Two of them were able to come today. So I'd like to introduce you Kylie Drake and Victor Himes. Did I say it right? Hi, Dennis. I'm sorry, Victor. I'm so bad with names. Come on up, you guys. You speak up here for us. What they're going to do is talk, give their presentation about what they do in a classroom. And then I'm going to do a little interview of them and ask them some questions. So are you guys ready? So you walk into this English classroom, all these kids are staring at you, and you start going. Okay. Right. Hello, everyone. We're here from the Anaheim Book Club. We're hosting the Poetry Slam for this year. Does anyone know what the Poetry Slam is? Okay. Does anyone, does anyone want to take a little guess? What Poetry Slam is? No? Well, what kind of Poetry Slam is this guy? It is a competitive poetry reading. You write an original poem and then you practice it, speaking it aloud until you're comfortable with it and can express it with expression and emotion. You can memorize it for more points during the competition. The competition is judged on the quality of the poem and the expression which it is presented. So you want to do more than just read it aloud. You want to make us believe what you guys are saying is very important. We have an example of one of last year's winners. Hello everyone, I'm Victor and I'll be doing for you guys The Moon Sings by Daniel Johnson, but I'll only do a little segment. The moon sings, the moon sings. Oh, how beautiful the moon sings. What, don't believe me? See for yourself, see how beautiful the moon sings. I tell the people dancing in the sky and someone dreams of learning to fly. Can you see now? No. Well, maybe one day you'll see how, how the moon can tell you about little boys and girls' dreams and how darkness can still be a dream. Thank you everyone for listening to the little segment and we'll continue on with that, with that little announcement. <laughs> because like, many students got to pay attention. They actually seemed to like it, actually. Many enjoyed it. <laughs> some laughed, some smiled, some clapped, and a little booze here and there, but... Most people yeah. paid attention. Yes. You got some booze? A few. <laughs> 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 um, let's see. Uh, how did the teachers respond? They were very interactive with us. They wanted... We had most of the teachers that we talked to. They wanted to participate, but I didn't have enough information for the teacher to have them go for it. So. Oh, so I need to give you more information for that. So, okay. 
it's really more fun when teachers come out and do their own poems against each other. But this year was kind of disappointing because we had one teacher go up and it was like, uh. <laughs> And the other teacher who normally goes up was one of our judges this year and all the kids in our class were trying to get her to go. <laughs> She's won a couple times, so she wanted to hear somebody else's chance yes, to win. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Let's see now. Um, okay, I think that's it. Do you have anything else you can share with us? If you enjoyed it, oh, by the way, I had two teams of two each that went out. Uh, we started out the first day with one teacher that wanted a presentation, and Kylie was especially aggressive about inviting teachers to let them come, and we ended up <laughs> presenting to 23. I think 23 different teachers, I might just have several, but I don't remember what others, 101 classrooms, 2,500 kids you guys presented to. Did you realize that turned out that much? No. No, you did. Awesome. <laughs> so give them a hand. Thank you guys. <laughs> now, you're free to go if you want to go. They're going to go to Nuts Bay Farm. Oh, <laughs> so if you want to take off, I so much appreciate you coming, and um, I'm not sure if you want to stay with us and you've heard it all, though, so it's up to you. Oh, good night. 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 They were awesome. They were, they're such little kids. I have so much fun with my book club kids. We're kind of a loosey-goosey book club. We don't do the traditional, everybody read the same book this month and then talk about it the next month. They meet every week. In fact, right now, don't tell anybody, but we meet Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays, and we're working our way through the Harry Potter movies. <laughs> so the kids come in and they watch Harry Potter at lunchtime. Yeah. And then on Tuesdays, we kind of have business meetings, and I throw out a book once in a while, and if some of them want to read it, they do. And, and, but they, um, they just like to be involved. Stuff. It's kind of become a home for a lot of them, so they're great kids. Okay, so. I realize the social importance of just having a place to belong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what it is. Um, a lot of them have become friends with each other because they've they got to know each other through both clubs, so it's pretty mm -hmm. neat. So, again, the writing is it can be on an individual. I have a lot of students who just want to write because they do. We have a lot of poets in our school. I don't know if it's that way at every high school or class assignments. Um, Again, that thing of teaching them how to express, Victor did a really good job. He practiced that a lot, though. <laughs> they mostly don't practice that much. But you can show them examples. There's a lot of poetry slam presentations on, on YouTube. A lot of performances get taped and posted, so you can look through there and, and find things that you would like to show your students. Have a drama teacher involved. You know, get them to use their body, get them to look away from the page. Practice, practice, practice. Um, and this. This is the fourth time we've done this. <clears throat> the first one was not competitive. The last three have been competitive, and um, I always make my deadline the day before, because I know that my students always push the envelope to the last minute, and if I made it a week before, they'd be coming up till the day before to ask me to turn to go I don't mind making doing that last minute work, but I would like to have it differently next year, and I'm not sure what I won't be doing it probably, but if I did, I'd like to work it out somehow so that I had all my performers and I knew who they were ahead of time so that I could bring them in and work with them individually on presentation because that's so much a part of what a poetry slam is and we don't ever get that far with them. So, something to work on. Some of the teachers made to make their kids do it, but they encouraged them to do it by offering them extra credit. Those weren't necessarily our best presentations. The kids just came and read their poems a lot of it. But it was still there. It was still nice. They were still there. So. Oh, I'm going to show you. This is that poem that had the word in it that was like, oops, <laughs> what did she just say? And just as a little caveat, I wasn't terribly impressed with our, most of our performances this year. The one performance that was really passionate, the boy would have won without a problem. But for some reason, he left before the finals. And when I called him up, he was gone. Mm -hmm. And so we only recorded the finals, so I don't have recording of his work, but Angela did a good job in a very subtle kind of beat way, and our winner did a good job, and I'll show you this too. We won't listen to the whole thing, a little bit of it. We ask ourselves how life become, but the truth is life become what we became. I ask myself, do we do it for the fame, or is it truly to find our identity? 
happy between their names. But we also understand that, like, you know, gay, you can't live this life. That's why you gotta make your choices wise. Our generation has a lot of people making mistakes because they're not giving it all the takes. We want to put the person on, but yet we aren't looking so strong. Our generation is full of people criticizing other people. You see, it is also that you think the worst of her. For you to keep this, you can't compare it to her because you don't know her life. You don't know what she's been through. She just messed up the one night because the guy who's supposed to love her didn't put on the rubber back. But she still got no time to hoping you never hold her tight and let her know that everything's going to be all right. For you to let her cherry pop the bike. Did you catch that? <laughs> it's like, oops, what did she just say? <laughs> Unfortunately, our kids live in that world. They're very, a lot of them are very into, you know, sexually active. And romance is where it's at, and, and your life is all over if your boyfriend doesn't like you anymore. I, I suppose it's that way in a lot of high school worlds, but that's where we're at. So that's what they talk about. So that was uh, one of our finalists. She actually took third place. And it is a competition, and the kids know that, and they know they're going to, like uh, my students said, they're going to win. Now, I, my gifts are usually gift cards to Barnes & Noble, which is, I think, our only bookstore left, isn't it? <laughs> and uh, journals. I pick up journals pretty inexpensively at TJ Maxx, and they have a lot of variety of journals, like four or five bucks there. Uh, this year, I ordered books of poetry. I did the uh, Dover Classics off of Amazon. And they have nice collections, two, three bucks, and it wasn't too painful on the pocketbook. And of course, they all like to be up there and express themselves. They just love doing this. I don't know, they, they impress me because they're very great. So the most reward that they all get is that they did it. They get to express what's going on in their own world. I mean, we've heard some horrendous things about kids being abused, about family members being killed, about you know uh, fathers that are in jail, that, you know, and just all this stuff that the kids are free to say in poetry that they wouldn't normally tell them. So you do learn a lot about their lives, and I think it's cathartic for them. They get it off their chest. Um, they, do, they do some amazing things. This one was about war. It's pretty graphic. Uh, about kid, boy, little boys dying. You know, not, I mean, considering like a 18-year-old is a little boy dying in war. Um, why hold a poetry slam? Well, Mark Smith says it's important for people to get up and express what they have in their hearts and minds. Get validated for it. And that really is what a slam is all about. It's a chance to get up and and say your piece. And like I said, we do open mic every month, which is also that, but we don't ever have any inter interaction about how it's presented. We just let the students get up and they do poetry and they do songs and they do beatbox and they do short stories and they do speeches and they do all sorts of interesting things. Some days we have three performers and some days we have 20 performers. And I just have the mic up and Victor is usually our MC. They sign up on the spot. He introduces the next person. Another thing we do, um, we don't really make much money, but the kids have fun as we sell coffee drinks or hot chocolate or cookies or something from the checkout desk <laughs> during these events. And so we make a little money. And I use that to um, subsidize either club t-shirts or I made, last year was the first time we made sas sashes for our seniors. So I go buy fabric and I have them printed with Anaheim High School Book Club and they just think that's so. So lots of reasons to hold a slam. Student expression. It, Poetry is part of our standards, 16 mentions of poetry in the standards. And as you saw with the common core things that Kathy had flashing out there today, expression, oral uh, things, writing, reading, all that's part of poetry. So it fits in to what we're doing. Um, great way to end poetry unit. Individual classrooms often have their own slams. Well, there's one thing on the wiki in that listing of poetry websites about a teacher that challenged another teacher to a poetry slam, and he wrote a slam poem as part of his challenge, and it's really cute if you read that. I think it was Mr. Dodds or something like that. It's really cute about competing against other classes. It promotes library program. I mean, anything you do to advertise your library gets the word out that it, there's stuff going on in there. People know about it. People are excited about it. Even if they didn't come, they go, how'd the slam go? You know, blah, blah, blah. So it, it does keep your program alive, and it's, it's fun. It's a lot of work, <laughs> but it's fun. <laughs> I think <clears throat> between the prizes, all the prizes, and um, the food that we sold, which we never recoup our loss on, it cost about $112 for everything we did. And then I had a lot of gifts, like the things that everyone that competes got a gift, and we wrapped. I had a 
a lot of paperback books that were donated by Scholastic or Washington Mutual or something ages back. And my uh, tech went to, I think, Borders and wants to buy something, and they got to talking, and they donated a bunch of stuff that was on the sale table. And so we had all, little, all sorts of little doodads that we just wrapped them all up, and they just read them. A prize and make everybody a certificate, and the certificate is on the wiki too that I use, and print that out so that everybody gets an acknowledgement. I put their poems at the bottom so that they remember what they presented. Here's our finalists. Uh, like I said, our, our top presenter didn't show up, so this young lady, um, Samantha Payne, ended up presenting two poems because she came in second in the heat that the boy that really would have won came in first, and so she presented two poems. So we have them sit up, come up front at the end, and then I just randomly go through and have them come up, and they just perform their poem again. It was interesting, they were all more nervous the second time. They all started to stutter over their words. And this is our winner. Daniel did a poem called Darkness. He actually had another one uh, about, I don't know what it was about, it's kind of more romantic. This one, interesting. Student apparently he was a long hair kind of hippie type, you know. For a while, people looked at him and go, "Is that the same kid?" I don't know if he cut his hair for slim or if he just changed his. You know, he's growing up. Um, I, I had no idea what his poem was about. He's one of those students that has a lot of words in his head. And when he finally gave it to me, that I could type it up so I could put it on the library website, it was like, oh, I can see. But you know, sometimes when students are very intelligent. And they know a lot of adjectives and adverbs, and they use every one of them. It's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> the thing I think that won for him, well, the judges probably liked his language. But he had this amazing bass voice that was like, wow, what a voice. And even though he didn't present with a, a lot of energy and emotion, he still got the highest score. So here he is. So even though I don't hear much chatter about it going on on CSLA anymore, I know it's, there's probably others that are still out there. You're welcome to contact me. I didn't put my email address anywhere, but if you want information on anything. Pretty much everything I did, this is my outline of everything we went through. And um, prepare yourself, research online, figure out what you want to do, create it, interest, 
or holding that open mic monthly made it a, a natural segue into doing a slam because people expected something anyway. If you have a book club involved, your students, they love being involved. Figure out what you're going to do and what you're going to sell and where it's going to be and advertise it. Encourage your teachers to let your students present. I'll find someone to take pictures. I couldn't get a video, real video camera. I actually took those on my little Canon almost, um, digital, and they weren't too bad. The, the kids were great. Oh, I was going to say, did anybody see Hunger Games? Did it make you sick? Oh, yeah. yeah that's right. The way it was moving, is like, I thought, well, this is like Hunger Games. It's like, whoa. <laughs> they didn't do it on purpose, but that's how it was. So there you go. If you have um, questions, feel free to email me. All the documents are on the wiki. And I can't get online, so I can't show you that. Oh, I was going to. Um, No, I don't know. I, have the, I don't write poetry. I'm not a poet. But I write silly little ditties. So I thought I'd perform this silly little ditty for you in slam style. <laughs> Ask me why. I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm going, I shouldn't do that. No, I shouldn't do that. No, I shouldn't do that. Go for it. Okay. Wait, don't start. Don't start. Hold on. I gotta get this one. No pressure, though. <laughs> Performing Penguin by Suzanne Brown. There was a little penguin just sitting on a track. One day, there came a choo choo train and hit him in the back. And now that little penguin is floating in the sky. And I thought people said that penguins couldn't fly. <laughs> six-word story. Have you ever read his oh, six-word story? Yeah. It's like baby shoes for sale, never worn. That's the story. Oh, Isn't that word plain word? Word? You do that. Kathy does that. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's I know. It's like so good. So good. Somebody turn off yeah. that camera. <laughs> oh, this is so good. Oh! 
Yes, we've been taking the whole time. <laughs>